You're looking live from Bear Tracker 7 over the High Park fire right now. And the sun is coming up, but you can see the smoke is still very, very thick. We are on fire alert this morning, reporting live to you from the command post here at the High Park fire. Some good news. An additional 200 firefighters are expected to arrive today to help in the firefight right now. Zero containment. This fire is still burning out of control. It is already the largest and most destructive fire in Larimer County history. In fact, it's burned more than 41,000 acres and claimed at least one life. 62-year-old Linda Stedman died in the fire. Her home was one of the nearly 120 structures, many of those homes that are now known to have been consumed by the flames. Again, this fire is 0% contained, but firefighters are hopeful they'll be able to make some progress today. Yeah, especially in these early morning cool temperatures. We've got a picture now of what this 41,000 acres really means. It's kind of hard to imagine that kind of space. This High Park fire now covers more ground than the entire city of Fort Collins proper. That's essentially about 56 square miles. It is a big fire. And the evacuation zone even bigger. 2,600 residents receiving those evacuation notifications. Here's a look specifically at the evacuation area. There were no new orders of evacuation since yesterday, but a lot of families anxiously waiting at the evacuation center to find out about the status of their homes. Yeah, just trying to get some kind of information. We did get Air Tracker 7. I got a great view yesterday of how close these flames are coming to some of these houses. Uh, we've got uh, one house that just the flames came right up to it but didn't get it. The firefighters did a marvelous job protecting some of these homes, but of course other homeowners not as fortunate. Nothing but a pile of ash all left of their home. Tyler Lopez is just down the way in the heart of Fort Collins with the latest on what the attack plan will be today because, Tyler, they're trying to get some handle, some way to stop this fire some on one of those edges. Right, and they've got some reason for optimism, Mitch. A lot of that helps coming from the air, but they're also going to have a lot of folks on the ground. They're all going to be dealing with what you can see behind me right now. We're at Hughes Stadium, such a huge, thick layer of smoke. Horsetooth Reservoir there. They have closed Centennial Drive to Horsetooth Reservoir because so many people were doing what you just described, coming to watch the show, watch the air tankers, watch the flames move. They couldn't get their emergency vehicles through, so that is one change today. But anyone taken to the air today is going to have to deal with the smoke, and that's also true for the folks on the ground. They're going to have more of them. Another 200 firefighters are on the way today. That means they'll have 600 firefighters battling the High Park blaze. Crews were able to make some headway yesterday for the first time, really. Officials say it's all thanks to those aggressive air attacks all day, just a constant barrage of heavy air tankers and a single-engine planes as well, all from the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport in Broomfield. Now, to make a trip takes about 40 minutes. Just yesterday, 49 loads of retardant were dropped on the fire. Definitely made a difference. Still 0% contained, though, now. As we give you a live look at Hughes Stadium, you can see that incredibly thick, thick wall of smoke around that stadium. If you're an athletics coach today, if you've got practice, you might want to think about that today. At least keep in mind how serious and thick the smoke is. Some of the smokiest conditions I've ever seen at a fire in Colorado. So keep that in mind. Overnight, the crews protected the structures. They patrolled the area. Hopefully today they can take the fight to the fire itself, but that will be dependent on weather. Dale, of course, the big question in the 24-7 uh, weather center, are we going to see a lot of wind? That would be the big problem. Well, it does not look like we're going to see really gusty winds. In fact, that's the reason you're seeing a lot of that smoke, and it's so, so thick this morning, is because there's no wind to actually dissipate it and let it move away from where it is. Here in Greeley, you can actually see that haze this morning, and you're going to even be able to smell it down here in Denver as the winds start to pick up throughout the day. Our relative humidities right around that fire are pretty decent this morning. 42% is our monitor there at Redstone, which is the closest monitor we have right there to the Hyde Park Fire. Hyde Park fire, rather. As we look at our gusts, again, very mild, only two miles per hour this morning. Now, those are going to pick up throughout the day, but we're not expecting any severe gusts up to, you know, 30 or even 40 miles per hour like we saw over the weekend. Our temperatures are also pretty mild this morning, 48 there in Fort Collins, 50 in Greeley, and 54 here in Denver, and that's going to help those firefighters really get a handle on that blaze. 54 here in Aurora, 54 in Boulder. Parker, just a little bit warmer there at 57 degrees. Now, from here, we are all going to warm up. We're we're going to start with that hazy sunshine this morning. Temperatures close to 60 by 8 o'clock, warming to 80 at lunchtime, then into the low 80s this afternoon. Now, this afternoon, there is a chance for some isolated storms. Some of them could be severe. Now, most of those are going to be east of the I-25 corridor. So, Jason, unfortunately, it doesn't look like the 
the fire is going to get any rainfall today. Unfortunately, it's a tough Tuesday. Right to the map where we have a couple of problems. Northbound 225, an accident near Mississippi, and we do have some delays coming all the way now from Parker Road. Unfortunately, from this view, we can't quite see it. It's back in the haze on that northbound side, and big delays up from Parker Road. Southbound is unaffected. The other trouble spot is going to be an accident. It's this one. You see the two cars on the southbound side of I-25 just after 84th Avenue. It is hanging up the drive force here this morning on the live CDOT camera. We can see it right there, how heavy the traffic is down from 104th. Back to the map where I can show you some of the closures that we have up in the fire zone, and that's still going to be a big issue basically from Highway 34 to Highway 14 and west of 287. All these county roads are going to be closed down in here. We also have restrictions, obviously, on Highway 14 coming west of Ted's Place all the way to Rustic, which is quite a bit west of the fire zone, and Highway 287 also restricted in spots all the way from between Fort Collins and about County Road 27 or so all the way to uh, this through this uh, zone. So we are checking in with the evacuees. That's where Bertha Lynn is right for us this morning. How's it going up there this morning, Bertha? Well, things are starting to pick up a little bit, Jason, as people, the evacuees inside who spent the night, about a dozen or so, start to wake up. This is uh, some of the information that the Red Cross provides to evacuees who show up here. Uh, pets and safety checklist, how to protect their homes, get a kit, make a plan, be informed. There is no doubt that the Red Cross is here to provide for the immediate physical needs of evacuees. And I'm talking with Adam Ray, who is the spokesperson for the Northeast area. Adam, what kind of things do you do and provide for these evacuees? Uh, these evacuees are provided uh, basically everything they need uh, for their immediate emergent care needs, uh, bedding, a uh, place to sleep, food, water, medical attention, um, everything they would need. You and the Salvation Army do a really great job of that. And it's not just about the physical needs, it's about uh, a person's emotional needs as well, the stresses of going through a disaster like this. Absolutely. It's a very emotional situation. We do have mental health staff on scene from, from the Red Cross. They are licensed therapists and counselors, and they are here to help and talk to the evacuees, uh, the people in the shelter, uh, people that just need to come in and um, get their emotions out about what happened. It's a, it's a trying time. And because they're professionals, they are providing also strict confidentiality when they deal with these people. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We do follow HIPAA laws to the T. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much, Adam. Real quickly, if people want to help, what should they do? I would say go to uh, www.redcross.org and um, hit the donate tab. Okay. That's the best way to go. Adam's point being that they really would like to encourage people to donate cash so that they can set these people up on a way back to a normal life with money that they can go out and buy their own things as opposed to used clothing, which has been coming in, which is so generous from the community, but it is not as helpful as they would like. Reporting live here in Loveland, I'm Bertha Lynn. Now we send it up to Anna. All right. Thank you, Bertha. Of course, one of the reasons firefighters are having a hard time getting this fire contained is not just because of the erratic nature of the fire itself, but they've really been focused on protecting those homes of the evacuees and trying to make sure people and their animals stay safe. Now, sadly, we have confirmed at least one person never made it out of the High Park fire. The sheriff's office telling us that they have found the remains of 62-year-old Linda Stedman. Her cabin was on Old Flowers Road. The sheriff said as two notification calls were made to her home. A deputy also tried to go to her house to warn her, but the fire was simply moving too fast. When he got up close enough to that residence, uh, the area was engulfed in flames. He saw what he believed to be the structure in flames. Now the coroner will have to make the official confirmation on the victim's identity through dental records, but the Stedman's family already releasing a statement asking for their privacy as they grieve during this difficult time, but they also wanted to thank the emergency responders for their dedication as they continue to work the High Park fire. We are getting some incredible images as well of this fire from every angle. We want to let you know that the devastating images of homes destroyed you can find on our website as well as those that are spared. Those are there on the denverchannel.com. We've created a slideshow for you with a video and images from Air Tracker 7. Yeah, so just some great shots we've been getting from our My Reporters out there. A lot of people watching this fire very closely. Still a health warning in effect because of the thick smoke. Again, you should be able to see the mountains behind us. You can't. And it seems like it's gotten thicker since we went on the air this morning at 5 a.m. So it's certainly an issue. We've got the Air Tracker 7 shots to give you an idea, just the huge smoke plume that's over this fire. Uh, and you can take a look at what it's, what it's like. This health warning affects uh, specific people, uh, children, 
the elderly and those with lung disease. They are being told to limit their time outside, uh, get inside and seal up the house if you can, and try to avoid getting out and, and try to breathe in the smoke. The health warning is for the Front Range Urban Corridor, so that's essentially all the metro area, and it goes all the way south to El Paso County, because that's how far some of this smoke has been drifting. So on air and online, we certainly have you covered here as we continue to bring uh, breaking information about this fire. we got multiple crews, as you can tell, all day long on this fire. So keep it here on 7 News. And, uh, and if you can't be near our TV, we are live streaming this broadcast, this two-hour morning show, on the DenverChannel.com. That's also a great place where you can get constant updates if you're at the office or something. And that's one of the places we've been getting some of the great shots of the fire zone from folks uh, just like you. Viewers have been sending in some great pictures. In fact, more than a 1,000 of you have uploaded pictures to our website at the denverchannel.com are my reporters out there we appreciate you being our eyes and ears we can't be everywhere and Christine I know you've been sifting through all these pictures uh, what do you have yeah we have so many for lack of a better word wonderful pictures in some ways if you look at the artistry of it it's just amazing to see how much this fire has grown let's take a look right now this is from Ray and Ann eerie smoke cloud blowing this is just east of Horsetooth Reservoir. You can see all that smoke. Obviously, it you know makes for a good picture, but devastating for all those families involved. Let's look at this one here. This is from Lacey. You can see the red sun. We've been talking about that with all that smoke covering the sun. This picture really puts it in perspective. We've been talking about the ash falling in that area where the fire is. This is a high park fire. This one is from Carol Deshawn, uh, West Fort Collins right there. You can see compared to the size of that nickel, how big the ashes are falling in that area. We have this one I want to show you here. It almost looks like we're in a desert. Uh, this one sent in from Sandra Cuba, picks from uh, Highway 287. This is from Sunday. You see that haze that we continue to talk about um, that we've been seeing in, in the fire zone. So we want to see your photos and videos of the High Park Fire from where you live. And all you have to do is go to our website and you can upload your pictures to my report at the DenverChannel.com. As we mentioned, we've been getting more than a thousand. We'd love to share some with our viewers. Uh, and as Anna mentioned, you guys are our eyes and ears because we can't be everywhere either.